All right then, my friends, in this lesson, we're going to look at something called context and how it can help keep all three co-pilot modes, ask, edit, and agent on track and focused on the task. So context in AI terms is basically a way to feed the model more information to help it understand what you want it to do and where. For example, I'm in edit mode right now. And I want Copilot to update a CSS file with a new class and then apply that class to a few forms throughout the site. Now I've got a prompt here ready to go and technically I could just fire it off right now and Copilot would try to figure out which files are relevant and make the changes. But if I did that, the results might not be what I wanted or expected. And I actually tried this off camera before I made this video. And instead of updating the CSS file, I already had it created a brand new one. It linked it in the layout file and then it only updated two out of the four forms that I wanted. So in situations like this, it's way better to give Copilot some context and explicitly tell it which files it should be working with. Now, we've already seen how when we're working in a file, and we have that file open as an active tab, then that file gets added implicitly as context to the chat. And we can see that right here. If I have the CSS file open, it gets added down here. So that is cool. But we can only have one active tab at a time, right? So that means implicit context is limited to that single file. However, we can explicitly add files to the context by dragging them over to the chat itself, which I'm going to do with the chapters create and edit views. All right, and I also wanna do that with the codex, create and edit views as well. That's where the forms are, right? So they're the full files now, which contain the forms, and we've added all of those as context to this request. And that means when the AI model looks at this request, it's gonna know exactly how and where to make the edits because we've supplied all that context. So let me send off this request right now, and we're gonna see what happens. And by the way, you might be thinking we should be working in agent mode to do this because we're updating several files, but this is still a really narrow task and edit mode can be used to change multiple files for these kinds of targeted changes. And like I touched on in the last lesson, agent mode's true power is in much broader tasks, which includes many files, multiple steps, and even running terminal commands. And we'll see those later. Anyway, it looks like Copilot has made all the changes. We can see some CSS changes right here. And is that all it's made? There's another one up here, I think. Yep, and there as well. We can also see them in the edit file and in the create file. In fact, there's five files changed. Now, I'm not gonna go through each one individually and take a look at them. I'm just gonna keep all of the changes. By the way, I would advise you check the content changes that Copilot makes. I'm just gonna keep all these changes and see what it looks like now in a browser. All right then, so now I just wanna cycle through each of the forms and see if it's worked. So let's start with this one. Yep, we see the border, same there, awesome. Let's click on a chapter and then edit. Okay, that works. And then finally, the codex entry. Yeah, that works as well. So this is not a great design feature. It's not something I would choose to implement. I just wanted to pick something so I could demonstrate how context works and how we can add multiple files as context to Copilot. Okay, so now hopefully you understand how context can be useful. And now I just want to show you a few different ways that we can add different kinds of context to chats. And by the way, adding context this way applies to all three different modes, ask, edit, and agent, not just the edit mode. Anyway, we've already seen how to drag and drop files as context, but we can also drag entire folders as context as well. For example, if I wanted Copilot to focus on the chapter views, I could drag the entire chapters folder into the session and you could add multiple folders if you wanted to. Then we could remove them by clicking on the cross next to each one if we're done with them. Also, Instead of dragging and dropping files and folders, we can add them by clicking on the context paperclip thing right here. And when we do that, it's gonna open a drop down at the top where we can select what we want to add as context. So we can add files and folders by clicking on this option right here. And then we can select any folders we wanna add as contacts, uh, context or any files as well. So for example, I could select the resources folder and that's gonna add it then to the context for me. We can also add other things as well, like custom instructions, which we might look at later, uh, screenshots, version control changes, problems and errors, symbols and tools, yada, yada, yada. Now, we're not going to go through all of these things now, but I do want to show you a few things which I think are useful. The first one is a tool. So let's click on that. And it's this fetch one right here. 
which allows Copilot to go out and fetch a web page and add its context, uh, content to the context. So this is really useful if you want to supply docs or style guides or whatever else you want the AI to use when performing certain tasks for you. So let's do a little example. And to do this, we're going to switch to agent mode because we're going to be performing a slightly larger task now, which is to install a package called Livewire for this project and set it up. And I want to supply the up to date docs on how to do this, because sometimes AI models can do things an old way without providing up to date instructions or context to it. And that's largely down to the learning cutoff dates that AI models have. So first of all, you can add the context by clicking on context right here, then going to tools, then selecting fetch. Or to do it more quickly, you can just say hashtag fetch, and that's gonna do the same thing. And you can reference some tools and context this way using a hashtag. So I'm gonna paste in the URL right now after this for the live wire setup guide, and then I'm gonna ask it to use the supplied installation guide to install Livewire and use Livewire to update the welcome page to show a chapter summary, including how many chapters have been created. Then once that's ready to go, I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so first of all, it's asking me to install Livewire. So I'm gonna click on continue to let it do that. It does normally ask you to confirm that it's gonna fetch this, but because I already did that previous to this video, it's not asked me again. Okay, and now it wants to make this new live wire component. So let's click on continue to allow it to do that by running this command. All right then, so it looks like it's made changes to four different files. It's made this chapter summary component and then the layout, also the chapter summary um, view right here. And then we've got the welcome page as well. So I would normally go through these and take a look at all of the different changes, but I'm just going to keep all the changes and then try this out in a browser. And by the way, you don't have to keep the changes in order to preview the changes in a browser. Normally it will show in the browser if you have some kind of live reload enabled. So you can preview in a browser first, then choose to either keep or discard the changes. And you can see over here, this is the new little section that was added in. And it says there are currently five chapters in your novel. Now it doesn't look great, but I didn't tell it to style it in any particular way. I could do that if I wanted to with edit mode maybe, but at least the functionality is there. Okay, so let's look at another couple of ways that we can add context. First, we'll click on the context button again. We'll select tools and you can see there's loads more tools on top of fetch that we can just use to supply context. For example, we can search a GitHub repo by using this one and supplying the repo link. We can also use the code base one to tell Copilot to search the entire code base for something. And like we did with fetch, we can actually reference a lot of these tools directly in the request by using a hashtag and then the name of the tool. For example, for the code base one, I can just say hashtag followed by the word code base. And if I added a message here telling Copilot to look for certain things, it's gonna scan the entire code base for them because we've added it as context. Another nice feature we can use for context is through the simple browser built into VS Code. So let me just show you that now. To open the simple browser, I'm gonna press Control, Shift and P to open the command palette. Then you can search for simple browser and just click on this option. When you do that, you just need to add in the URL that you want to open. So I'm gonna paste in the URL of the site here and hit enter and we're gonna see what happens. So we can see this welcome page right here and you can also see this little message at the bottom and it says add element to chat. Now, first of all, I'm going to click on start and then that creates some kind of inspector for me and you can hover over elements and then click them to add them to the chat as context. So for example, I'm gonna click on this footer section right here and that adds the selector, see the CSS selector for it, footer.site hyphen footer and also a screenshot of the footer as well. And I could use that as context and just say, can you update this text to have a smiley face at the end? Okay, so you can see now it's found where that footer content was and it's added this smiley face at the bottom. I'm gonna keep the change. And if we go back to simple browser, we can also see that update right here. You can just about see that smiley face. All right, so hopefully now you know how to add context to your chat sessions. And there's one more thing I wanna quickly talk about before we finish this video. And that is something called the context window. 
Now a context window is a way to describe the maximum amount of text or context that an AI model can consider at any one time. Now this context is measured in tokens and each model has a maximum number of tokens for its context window. Now, when it comes to Copilot in VS Code, this means that if a session goes on for a long time and you're manually adding lots of files to the session context, then that window is gonna fill up because when you have an active session, all of your previous messages, responses and manually added context are added to that window. So at that point, when you've been chatting for a while, adding lots of context and the window fills, a lot of the time the model will start to truncate the context automatically. And it does this by generally removing or shortening earlier messages and responses within that chat session and also potentially removing larger files you previously added as context. Now, when that happens, the AI can st uh, sometimes start to lose track of what it needs to do and not perform as well as it should. So that's why I like to keep my sessions targeted to specific updates or changes or features and tasks and then I would start new ones when needed and that way the context window never gets too bloated. Now I would say this is less of a problem now as the context window caps in Copilot are generally getting a bit larger than they used to be but it is something worth knowing about. Anyway that's about it for the basics of context. We will be using it more as we go on and we'll also be looking at other ways we can add context later too by using something called instruction files.